I declare and decree in this season, I will submit to the voice of the Holy Spirit calling my name. I am walking in the fullness of his purpose and plan for me and my life. It is my reaping season. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back for episode two, season four of Launch the Vision, Sis, um, on She Emerged, the podcast and video blog. Again, I'm always excited to be with you guys. Um, as I stated last week, we're going to be going through my new 30-day interactive Launch the Vision devotional. Um, the devotional is dedicated to finding your why, because why not live in purpose, on purpose, and with purpose? Like, duh. So today um, is day two of the devotional, but week two for us. And it is entitled The Strength to Endure. Um because sometimes we just don't feel like we have the strength to push through and get it done. Sometimes you're just mentally and emotionally drained and you're tired and you just, you just don't want to. Um, it takes a few seconds to change your thoughts. Um, and, and so when you have those thoughts of doubt, please be mindful and kind of try to reset yourself. Um, you don't want to get stuck in, um, a stagnant place because you just have surrendered to um, the fatigue and the, and the tired and the sadness and the defeat. Um, so I encourage you to, to, you know, always continue to push through. Even if you don't feel like it's going anywhere, push through, um, you know, get up one foot on the floor at a time. If you have to just say a prayer before you even sit up in the bed to motivate yourself to do so, um, then I encourage you to do that. We have to remember that the power of life and death lies in our own tongues. We have the power to speak things into existence and into manifestation. So speak your good fortune into manifestation. Speak your promise into existence. Speak the strength you need into existence and then harness it and push through. Um, because I don't, I don't want to see you in this season living in a, in a, a space of defeat. My shirt is like really bright. It's like lime green. I, it was so cute. My 11 year old got it for me for my birthday last year. And I love this shirt, but it is not translating. Honey. It's looking like I'm neon yellow, but y'all gonna get this neon yellow today. Um, so, you know, again, trying to pull on and encourage yourself is sometimes easier said than done. So we have to push for the strength to endure. Um, so today's scripture is coming from Ephesians uh, chapter three, verse 16. Um, and it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened, which might with might through his spirit in the inner man. Now, come on. We all know, you know, what God's promise is. Um, and we all, or should know. All right, let me not say that because some of us just don't know. Some of us are still learning um, to build a relationship with God and still trying to figure out and believe in and, and that faith walk. And it's tough. It's tough. That faith walk is tough, especially when you hit those low moments and those low places and those stumbling blocks. And you just be like, um, like enough already. Um, what is this? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and you become frustrated. So I won't say that. Some people are still learning of the love, grace and mercy of God. But just know that it's there. I'm a living testimony. There are a million people on this planet plus who can speak to um what God is truly capable of. Um, I think sometimes we get stuck in all the sweet, cute, mushy stuff about God. Like, he, oh, he's just, he's just great. And, you know, he does all things well and he's just so kind and loving and yeah, but he'll gather you. He will. If you're not doing things the way they, that um, you're supposed to do, make no mistake, he will whoop your legs. Um, he will gather you. He will put you in a hard place. Um, so I'm not one of those people that's going to tell you it's all sunshine and rainbows because it ain't. Um, if you go read the Bible, honey, he shook tables. He answered by fire. He answered by famine. <laughs> he sent the locusts. He burnt cities. Yeah, mm -hmm, that part. 
So when he, when he's angry, you know, when he's not getting the results that he want, that he can and he will. Uh, so I ain't going to lie to you. I'm not going to tell you. It's all because it ain't. Okay? Because he'll get you all the way together. I've been on the receiving end of that and I don't like it. And so I don't advise that you do it either. <laughs> but when it comes to the strength to endure, if you tap in, he will give it to you. If it it lives in us, you know, already. Um, I think, again, we sometimes get so stuck in the can'ts um, that we push ourselves so far away from the what we can do, from the cans. Like, I can do it. Uh, and I think that um, sometimes our past and the people that we have surrounded ourselves with can play a big part in that. Um, you have to be mindful of your circle. You have to be mindful of the people that you surround yourself with because not everybody, unfortunately, wants to see you win. And it doesn't have to necessarily be because of something that you've done. It could just be something personal within them that they just, you know, don't want to see you do what they can't do. And sometimes it could be the people closest to you that feel like that. Um, because sometimes people fear you outgrowing them. Um, and, and if she outgrows me or he outgrows me, are they going to leave me behind? Um, so you have to be mindful. If your circle is not encouraging you, um, holding you accountable in love, um, the accountability needs to feel like not just discipline, but a hug. Um, my sister friend can discipline you and correct you and hold you accountable. And you'd be like, I just get in trouble. You'd be very confused. You would, you would be very confused. Um, and that to me is what accountability and correction, um, in love should be. She has these things that she calls courageous conversations. And when she says she can really have a courageous conversation, just get out the way. But her courageous conversations don't feel like, um, they're not demeaning. They don't feel like punishment. Um, and so those are the type of people that you want around you. People that are going to genuinely encourage you, genuinely, um, give you course correction, genuinely push you, um, and, and and have a genuine desire to see you win and succeed. Because if you don't, um, yeah, finding the strength can be a struggle. So your circle, your friends, your family, the people that you surround yourselves with, uh, that is going to be important. I cannot stress enough that there will be people in your life that you have to let go. Not everyone should have full-on access to you. There are some people that you are going to have to love from a distance. What what Nanny used to say? You got to handle them people with a long handle spoon. That was wisdom. Um, and that doesn't mean that you don't love them, you don't like them. They just um they just aren't right to have to be in your inner circle. So there's a circle inside of a circle inside of a circle. But this core circle, these are the people um that help or they feed your spirit. They help you stay in right relationship. They help you grow. They encourage you to grow. Um, those are the people that should be here, the nucleus, the core um, of your group, of your friend circle, of your, you know, accountability partners. That should be that. Um, and then you have the others and then the others. And that's okay. We have to become comfortable with protecting our space. We have to be comfortable with our no. And that no applies to no, you can't have access to me right now. No, you are not entitled to um, to this information. We also have to be aware of who we share information with because everybody don't need to know everything. You cannot share um, everything with everybody. You just can't, not because again, not everybody is celebrating you. Not everybody is praying for you. There's people that are actually praying on you. Um, so there are some things you need to hold close to the vest until it's time to release them. Uh, you know, I've been doing some studying it down the rabbit hole of these things called monitoring spirits, and they can come in the form of a nosy person. Be mindful of the person that don't check on you on a daily basis, but very randomly will call you and be like, so what's going on? What are you doing? What you got going on? 
I ain't talked to you in a month of Sundays. What you, what you, did you, what, have a good day. You cannot give everybody everything. Um, we have to understand that some things, you just work on them in silence. And when it's time to be released, the world will find out. I know sometimes in our excitement and our haste, we can, you know, oh my God, I want to share with the world. But I mean, that's just being honest. The world ain't always rooting for you. So, um, you know, be mindful of that. And be okay with having to shift yourself away from people. Be okay with having to reconstruct. Because when God gives you a reset and he's giving you this vision and it's time for you to walk in it, um, there's a reset you know, that's, that's happening within you and around you. And that reset may include some people be obedient to that reset because he's removing them for a reason. He's moving them for a reason, may not even be removing, just shifting them, moving them back a few paces. Um, and you just have to, you know, you trust him in that. And if you need it, pray, ask a revelation. Well, God, why are you doing this? And he will reveal it to you if you ask him, but sometimes we don't want to know get to that another time though. But again, you know, be mindful of your circle because they are the people that are going to help encourage you. Um, and you can draw off of and, and, and tap in to get that strength that you need when you're feeling frustrated or defeated. Um, listen, how many times have you created an idea in your mind and you ran with it? Just because I know how to do it, I'm good at it, I, I can do this. Okay. Again, we have many talents. Some of us have many, many talents. That doesn't mean that all of them are the vision and the long-term um, goal. And then when it doesn't work out, you get discouraged. Well, did you properly plan? Did you do the research? Um, did you write it all out so you could see the pros and cons? Did you plan for the long term? Did you even plan for the short term? Um, and you become and, and now you're discouraged because it didn't work out. Well, you didn't plan it properly, didn't go about it the right way. You know what? Crafting is a big thing. So I'm going to run out and I'm going to get this machine and I'm going to get the heat press and I'm going to do all the things. Great. You probably could make a t-shirt or two. Maybe even press a jacket. But where's your branding? Where's your marketing? Where's your business plan? How are you promoting this? How are you funding it? Where's the checks and balances? How are you collecting payments? Are you prepared to, you know, go out and do um, vendor shows to really push your brand? Where, where's the foundation? Not just I saw it, I watched it on YouTube. I thought it was easy. I'm gonna do it, and you didn't do any research. You didn't even prepare for the long haul. You didn't even prepare for the short haul. You were in the moment. You didn't even have short-term goals. You had momentary excitement. Um, you get frustrated and you're just like, I don't... Just, well, had you properly prepared, um, you would have had the strength to endure it. See, when you properly plan and you confirm that the vision is for you and that this is what the long-term goal is and this is what God is for you, for your life. And this is what's for you. When you confirm that this is what's for you, then you can prepare and start to train for endurance. Then you can plan for the long haul and not just a short run. Um, you know, I've learned for myself, because again, I'm always going to talk about me. I've learned that, you know, I had to start getting into alignment with what God had for me. And so I had to pray for the strength to face what was ahead. Um, not just know what's ahead, but now how do I face it? What are the tools? What do I need to get through this thing? Um, what am I going to have to do to prepare? What am I doing? Like, this is great, but now what do I do? Because I've done, I've haphazardly run off and done, you know, businesses and, and things of that nature. 
and made choices, life choices, without knowing and understanding what the long-term consequences were going to be for that momentary action or reaction. We don't want to do that. Um, we want longevity. We want the strength to endure. We want, we don't want to just keep throwing away money, time, and losing, um, you know, our assets by just running off all willy nilly. We just, we don't want to do that in this season. In this season, we want to have a concrete, well thought out plan um, and be able to execute it so that the vision will live and actually be effective and not just an idea. We want to be able to take it from an idea to a plan and launch it. Um, so that is why praying strategically, doing the research uh, before we jump off the cliff so that we know and, and we can develop the, the strength and the stamina to endure. Because anything worth having um, is you're going to have to work for and you have to be able to endure it. You're going to need the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual strength to endure um, what's coming, what comes with success, what comes with building. And if you don't have that, then you are way behind the eight ball and success at it may not, it may not work for you. Um, you know, we pray for the strength to face what's ahead and we ask God to condition our mind, our body and our spirit for the journey. It's just like training for a race. If you're going to go out and you're going to run a marathon, you have to train and condition for that. You have to prepare your mind um, to be able to stand that long haul of running that far and, you know, not being distracted and keeping your eye, you know, on the finish line while still being hyper aware of your surroundings um, to kind of, when you get tired, to kind of boost yourself up and encourage yourself to push through um, the tire so that you get that second win. That's what this thing called life is, just like a race. And when you're trying to build a brand and build a business and launch the vision and get an alignment, you need to be conditioned for that. Um, you know, and we start off with dealing with our mental health and our spiritual things and getting rid of the traumas and working through the generational curses and all of those good things. Um, and then we have to work on our physical being because there'll be long days and long nights when you're building and you got to be able to endure. And then when you start to actually build that brand and putting those things together, a lot of times you have to be hands on until you start turning a profit to where you can start delegating some things out. So you will need stamina in order to push through and make this thing work. You know, God didn't create us to fail. So failure is not of him. But we can fail when we leave him out of it. We can fail when we um, don't properly plan when we don't do the research, when we don't understand what we're walking into. Write the vision, make it plain. I'm going to repeat that so much. I'm going to be sick of it, but I wanted to stick with you. I want you to, you have to be able to write the vision and make it plain. When you write something and you see it and it's in front of you, it's, it's a visual, a visualization. Um, it's tangible. So that's why writing is important. You take it from a thought to an idea and you put it on that paper and you start to plan it out. And now it's tangible. This is something that I can attain. I can put my hand on this. Uh, and then you can move forward as you go through the steps. So that's why writing um, is so important. Like you want to write the vision. You want to make it plain. You want to be able um, to see it. And, and so that's why I'm a firm believer in writing and planning things out, because when I see it, it makes it more real for me. Um, and and I'm able to um, then, you know, take those. Uh, that's a building block. That's the foundation. I know that I've created something here. And then when you, you know, you write it, you're able to see it and you know what to exactly consult God on. The strategy. And then you write out what he gives to you and there's your strategy on paper and you can write it out and make it plain and, and it makes it easier for you to launch it when you can see it. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not, you know, you're not just praying and asking for God, send me the loan so I can start the business. No. How, what is the business? 
How do I build the business? What are the key factors for the business? What's the purpose for the vision for the business? Um, and then you can get to the rest of it. Like you want to pray strategically over every piece of whatever it is you're trying to build. And I don't care what it is. Um, even if it's writing a book, you need to pray over every aspect of that um, to make sure that you are operating within his will so that you'll be successful and to build endurance for the long haul. So it's time to build your endurance. What are you doing to build your endurance? Are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you drinking your water and minding your business? Um, taking your supplements, eating right, protecting your space. Um, not just staying around people, places, and things because they're familiar, even though you know it's toxic. Even though you know it don't mean you any good. Sometimes we do have to shift away and that's okay. Stop staying in situations that are not for you, that bring out the worst in you um, or do the worst to you because it's familiar or because you feel obligated to do so. We all have the right of choice um, in this life and how someone chooses to live theirs is on them. And especially if you, if you know that you've given all that you have to give um, and been the best person that you can be. And that's not saying being perfect, but being the best person you can be to a person. And you find that that's not enough. Because it becomes draining. And then you have nothing left for the vision that God gave you. You sitting around feeding everybody else and you're starving yourself. Um, how successful can you possibly be? You have to know when to say when and start to build endurance for you. And you can't build endurance for you and the vision that God has for you if you're giving it all away. If you are, you know, overindulging, overhelping, overstaying your welcome um, in certain spaces and places, you don't leave much for yourself. So I want you to be mindful of that in, in this season, that we are trying to build endurance, that we want the strength to endure, right? And so while we're trying to build the strength to endure what's ahead of us so that we can be obedient and walk in the vision that God gave us and walk in our greatness and receive the blessing and promise that God has for us, what is weighing us down? Um, our thoughts, our emotions, again, people, places, and things. We want to start to evaluate all of that and ask God to reveal those things to you. Pay attention. Um, don't stop looking the other way. If it don't feel good, nine times out of 10, it ain't working for you. Good. That's just being honest. Um, now, there are some things that as you're going through your own personal process that may not feel good, but it's for your own good. But people don't have the right to not make you feel good. People don't have the right to make you feel bad, should I say. Um, they don't have that right. And stop giving it to them because they're draining you and you're leaving nothing for you at the end of the day. You're not leaving anything for yourself. You don't have the strength to endure whatever it is that you're trying to build, whatever it is you're trying to do. You're not leaving enough wiggle room for you to have the strength to endure. So in this season, we're being selfish. Um, yes. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish. We are working on our ministry of no. We are being mindful of people who take more from us than we either have to give or than we that we want to give. Um, and we are focusing on what God has given us to do because we can no longer allow um, us sowing into other people to get in, in the way of what we should be doing um, for ourselves. And that doesn't mean that you don't still help people, but helping people can't be the priority. You have to, your first ministry is you. So if you're not being a good steward over you, how can you go outside of you and be a good steward for somebody else? Like if you're not being a good steward over your finances, um, don't ask God to give you more because you're not you're not being a good steward over it. So you have to start being a good steward over you um, and conditioning and building yourself for success for you because you deserve it. You have the right to it. It was promised to you um, when you were formed in your mother's womb. And this is your season to have it. Uh, and I, God has placed an expectation on all of us that we will rise to the 
occasion and the challenge and be obedient to him in him. So I need you to see you um, the way somebody else probably sees you because people do see the greatness in you. They're just waiting for you to catch up. So hopefully, um, you know, this encouraged you and I will be back next week with day three. Thank you for tapping in. Um, if you would like a copy of the interactive devotional so you can follow along with me as I'm reading this, because there are other activities in there besides the devotional pages, it is totally interactive because I did not want you to just read a devotional because I have a ton of devotionals. I read it, I put it down, I forget. This particular devotional forces you to engage. There are questions, there are prompts that just aren't for the day and it's a short term. So a short term goal is easier to accomplish than a long term goal. So we can you can absolutely see short term results when you do the work. So we have 30 days worth of work in this devotional that we're going to do so we can get down to the bottom of our purpose so we can live in purpose and with purpose. So I pray you join me. You can get your copy of the devotional at www.shalamarsheree.com or savedhealedenough.com um, so that you can join me. Also, if you have figured out your why and you've already found your vision and you're ready to launch it, now we can write the vision and make it plain. Let's get it. I have planners, notebooks, and journals geared specifically to launching the vision. This season is all about launching the vision. Um, so I have a content creators planner for 90 days worth of planning out your social media content. Um, I've done the research. I've consulted with experts to put it all in one place for you so that you can plan it out and see it and know, um, how to manage it all and make this thing called social media work for you um, so that you can increase your visibility, your followers, and have a plan. Again, write the vision, make it plain. I have a 90-day self-care journal um, because, again, a short-term goal is easier and less overwhelming than a 12-month goal. Sometimes the 12 months could just seem so far away yet so close and you just get overwhelmed. So 90-day increments is something that worked for me. So I'm just sharing that um, strategy with you. So I have a 90-day self-care goal because, again, you are a part of the vision. So mind, body, and spirit, you need to be healthy. Um, and sometimes we forget that. We are the key to the vision. We are the masterpiece in the master's plan for us. So you have to be conditioned to do that, but all the way around the board. So we're working on our, we are still maintaining the healing. We started with the trauma journey. So we are, you know, maintaining our mental health. We are working on our spiritual health. We are going to walk into working on our physical health. I don't care if you walk up and down the steps four or five times. That is exercise. That's cardio. Take some cans out of the pantry and do a few arm lifts. That's a little bit of weight. Walk around your neighborhood. Go out. Get into, get the fresh air. Walk up and down the block. There are a multitude of things that you can do to be healthy. Um, my daughter found this cute little $50 stepper on Amazon. It sits on the floor and you can just get on it and you can step. It's, it's compact. It doesn't take up a lot of space. I can keep it right here under my desk, but it allows me to do some exercise and keep my body going and in motion. Um, let's work on healthy eating. It costs you nothing to eat more vegetables. Drink your water. Water is important. Uh, water is great for the body. You can have your soda, your snacks, because listen, I like my snacks too. I'm a total foodie, but I'm learning in this season that I need to increase the good things and eat less of the bad things. So I can still have my snacks, but I'm doing it in moderation. I'm drinking more water. I'm taking more supplements. Me and this sour sap tea are like besties. More supplements. Uh, and I'm being mindful of the things that I'm putting into my body, which, you know, and it can be a struggle when you have unhealthy habits and you just used to, I like food, I like to eat. Um, but I had to tweak those things because again, I am walking in the vision that God has given to me and I'm not going to advise you to do anything I'm not doing for myself. Um, so we have to start working on that physical aspect. So I did create a 90 day self-care journal and it works 
um, it is geared towards all things self-care. There is a 30-day self-care challenge. Um, there is a um, healthy, simple workout for little simple things you can do, um, ideas to help you get into the habit of working out. Um, there's a, a tracker on there for your water intake, your BMI, whether you use all of, all of it or not, is just in there. You pick and choose what you, you know, what you're going to use. Um, I am working on turning some of those things and creating digital planners and trackers as well. So look out for that. Um, journals are always great because you need to vent. You need to vent. You need a place to get it out and a secret place. And that's fine. Um, there is now a prayer journal available. Uh, and then just the notebooks, the stationery and all the things. Girly, because you know, when you got a set, you got the planner, you want, you know, all the things to coordinate to go along with it. And so I, you know, I made that with you guys in mind. Um, but I plan on, you know, giving you all the tools that you will need um, to be better and walk in your purpose um, and live out this vision that God has for you because his promise is great. Um, and it, there are a million people on this planet that can tell you of God's love, his heart for you and um, his blessings. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this. Endurance is the word for the day. Endurance. Um, you can and you will speak life in and over yourself. Encourage yourself daily. Um, if nobody else does, you better do it. You got to do it. So as always, the sun rises and sets alone every day and still manages to shine. The moon rises alone every night and still manages to light someone's way. Be the light. Be the light. You are the vision. And it's time for you to launch it. Catch you next overcome. time. God's grace is sufficient. I am saved, healed, and enough. It is my winning season. She has emerged. Welcome to the manifestation of me.